The culture of Australia's Defence Force is in the spotlight tonight with six new inquiries examining the recent sex scandal at the Australian Defence Force Academy. That's on top of two already running. The head of ADFA has been told to go on leave indefinitely and is unlikely to return to his position. And the past week has tested the relationship between the Defence Department and its minister, Stephen Smith. Political editor Chris Yulman joins me from Canberra. Chris, if we look at Defence's track record, are these inquiries likely to change anything? Well, if past behaviour is the best indicator of future actions, then the short answer would be no, Lee. There have been inquiries into the culture of the military and its, and its training going back for eons, and the opposition has pointed out today that the Black Review into, in, into Accountability and Defence has been gathering dust on the Minister's desk for seven months now, with no word of its recommendations or whether or not they'll be implemented. But I've spoken with serving officers today, and some argue that there have been significant changes in the culture of defence and military training, particularly over the last decade, so there has been some change, but clearly in the Minister's eyes not enough. One of the messages he was trying to hammer home today was that people will be held accountable for their actions. But we need to drive home that inappropriate conduct uh, in uniform or as a representative of the Australian Defence Force brings with it serious adverse consequences uh, and when people make mistakes they suffer the consequences of their mistakes. One of the points I've made generally is that the single biggest challenge for defence is what I describe as personal and institutional accountability. That's the Defence Minister there, of course. Chris, we've seen in recent days the culture of defence and its attitude to women compared to rugby league. That must be a pretty chilling comparison for defence officials. Yeah, it is, and it would horrify some to be accused of it. And that I think that on many levels, the leadership has worked hard to try and affect some cultural change, but we've uh, and we've seen that it's it's very hard to do that. We know that the bad behaviour exists and persists because another recent inquiry showed a culture of predatory sexual behaviour and tribalism aboard the naval supply ship HMAS Success. Now, the Sex Discrimination Commissioner will peer into the organisation, and the Chief of the Defence Force pointed out that one of the six inquiries will also look into how drinking and inappropriate behaviour go hand in hand. We have pockets uh, in the, uh, the organisation where there are problems in some of these areas, particularly the misuse of alcohol. Um, and I think what we've got to do is have a look at all these areas. I, I welcome um, an audit, a stock take of where we've got to. Angus Houston there. Chris, is the Defence Department genuinely accountable to its minister? After 20 years of looking at it, Lee, I'd have to say that's a really good question. It's sometimes hard to tell. It is a department like no other because power is split between the military and civilian arms and former defence ministers will tell you that there's a lingering belief in the military that they're accountable to the Governor-General and not the government of the day because of the oath of allegiance they swear. But why is defence a special case? I mean, it's the only department that you hear repeatedly talked of as being a law unto itself. What, what is different about defence as opposed to the Department of Environment or anything? other department? Yeah, I guess there are a few things. It gets treated as a special case because it does special work, because let's face it, no one else is asked to risk their lives in the defence of the nation, so that makes it unique. And it will be the one government department quarantined for spending cuts in the budget. Spending on it will grow at 3% above inflation for years to come. And the military leadership knows that in a battle between the military and the minister, public sympathy is usually with the brass. But in this case, it might be a little bit different. I think it might swing the other way. And I think that Stephen Smith knows that, Lee. Chris Yulman in Canberra, thank you.